I returned the rental car to the airport and caught a bus into Valletta Central. From there I caught a ferry across to Slima, which is where I am now. This is where I'm staying for the next few days and I'm going to be exploring the three cities and Valletta and a few other places from this spot. So I'm walking along right now to catch a ferry back into the capital city of Malta, Valletta, a city with a population of around 7,000 people and I am looking forward to seeing it and doing some exploring. city of Valletta inscribed on the World Heritage List in 1980. These are the defensive walls built around the fortified city. The entrance is just to the right here. I'll be walking through that in just a second. Now, incredibly enough, I have actually been here once before. Way, way back in 1987, I came to Malta with my family, my mum, my dad, my sister and my nan. We stayed in Malia Bay and we came to Valletta on a day trip. In fact, here's a photograph of me standing with the Phoenicia Hotel in the background. And here's a photo that I just reenacted a couple of moments ago. Bit of fun. Incredible to be back. So Valletta was built in the mid 1500s by the Knights of St. John, a religious pact sent by the Pope. They ruled here for about three centuries. And the Grand Master at the time of the Knights of St. John was Grand Master Valette. So therefore the city was named after him. I'm just going to walk across the moat. Incredibly deep moat. You can see the city there ahead. Looking forward to getting in there and having a look. Just the scenery around here is incredible. So there are about 25 churches in here. It's a very religious country. And the city was built, I should get back to the history here. The city was built because the Grand Master was tired of sieges and raids by the Ottoman Turks. They were becoming more frequent. And so he built this fortified area in order to protect the government of Malta. Over here on the right is a relatively new building built to blend in with all of the old ones. This is the Parliament building. And then across on the left, some of the more original older structures. 
Valletta is the third capital of the country that I'm aware of. Emdina was the first one. Vittoriosa was the second just across the bay in the three cities. I'll be visiting there on another day. And Valletta, as I said, from the mid 1500s. The architecture in here is mainly Baroque style and it is very busy. And so last night I arrived at around about half past nine on a bus and I had to race to the ferry terminal to catch a ferry across to Slima where I'm staying and it was just unbelievably packed in this area. It was a Saturday night so I'm guessing that was the reason but you just couldn't hardly get through these streets it was so busy and so in the end I went down one of the side alleys managed to find my way just about through to the ferry terminal which costs about one euro 75 a trip <laughs> and two euros 80 for a return which is a bargain i think although it is only a five minute ferry ride maybe a little more just going to head up these steps now this will take me up to the royal opera house that was almost entirely destroyed during the second world war by war planes coming from sicily and italy you can see the pillars of the temples are pretty much all that still stand. Some of the most intense bombing campaigns happened right here in Valletta and it is just phenomenal to see. We'll be doing a separate video on Malta in the Second World War, looking at the Lascaris war rooms, looking at Operation Husky, looking at sites like this because it's a subject that I find extremely fascinating but uh, very sobering. So we're looking down Republic Street, the main shopping and entertainment area in the city. Lots of tall limestone buildings with these decorated balconies. I'm going to be doing a little bit more exploring around this part before I head over to the harbour. And if you're enjoying the video then thanks for watching and please consider subscribing and liking if you can they they really help the channel even the coffee shops here are extravagant full of history incredible place british phone box british post box so if you're wondering what was actually here before Valletta was built the answer is not very much. There was a small fortress. The fortress is still there. It's called St. Elmo's Fortress. It's much larger now because it's been added to over the centuries. But the main administration district, the residential area for the Grand Master, the palaces, the buildings where he would run the country from were all in the three cities, a place I'm gonna be visiting another day. We're we'll making a video while I'm over there. And as I walk down the streets here, these very unique, incredible looking balconies and buildings. Look at this, this must be a church up here. It's no surprise that the whole area is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But yeah, so I'll be visiting the three cities and exploring over there. But at the time that the Grand Master ruled from that area, there wasn't much over here and that was part of the problem is that this peninsula of land that is now Valletta was very prone to attack 
and that's what the Ottomans used to go for. Two sieges in about five years made the Grand Master's minds up to build more fortifications and eventually build their capital city right here in this spot. Look at this, another little quaint back alley going down the steps. I'm heading towards the Grand Harbour now, I think. I think I found it. Just to my right now is the magnificent Grand Harbour area. An area that's been used as a harbour dating back to Phoenician times, so thousands of years of history. And uh, it's got a great view as I stand here, fairly high up, of the three cities that I'll be visiting on another day. Conspicua, Vittoriosa and Senglia. Looking forward to taking a look at those. You can catch ferries and ships in this harbour that go to lots and lots of different places, including lots of places in Malta itself. Lots of day trips and activities that you can pay for and join in on. It's a nice place, lots of old buildings around this area as well. And so I think what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm going to head down to St Elmo's Fort, take a look around that area, the northernmost point of the city. But look at this. How cool is this? People down there having a swim. It is a hot day here in Valletta. Little makeshift bathing area on the rocks there. So I am now the opposite side of Fort St Elmo. In fact, this is the fortification wall right up above me there. So I did have a look to see if I could go in. There is now a museum in the fortress itself. It costs 10 euros to go in and have a look. It would be definitely worth it, I think, if I had a few hours. But I thought I'd come down here and have a look to see if I could make it anywhere near that lighthouse on the end of that breakwater over there. So the fortress has been here in one form or another for centuries. We know that in the 15th century, there was a coastal watchtower in this area. And then over the years, different rulers of Malta and Valletta have added their spin to it, increased it in size, strengthened it, and ultimately ended up with this huge, massive fortress that it is now. There is the wall of the fortified city and St Elmo is behind that. It's one heck of a way to ward off your enemies as they approach from the sea. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can make it up to that little lighthouse. And then I'm gonna head back into the center, get some dinner, and I'll show you a few clips of Valletta in the dark. I've got a feeling it's gonna be quite a magical place once the sun goes down and the city lights come up. That looks like a fairly new bridge, it's because it is. The original was destroyed by bombing in the Second World War. 